Yeah, I believe some of you guys were looking at the schedule and saw this uh, photo, and you're wondering what it is about. And uh, yeah, when you go to the schedule, you see the last guy who is the avatar that's actually a non-human, and you're curious, who is that mysterious guy? So, yeah, my name is Pai Wu, and uh, I'm at Octores uh, on GitHub and Twitter. So today I'm going to talk about um, prototyping with view single file component. So I work, uh, literally I work as a software engineer at Microsoft, but I more identify myself as an information architect. I think I like the name because I really care about the way that we organize and present information to people. I think those have a profound influence on the users of the tools that we built. And uh, I'm also the author of Viter, which is one of the most popular view plugins for VS Code. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, ju 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 just a quick poll. How many of you guys are using Viter? Just want to know. Um, oh, great. Um, yeah, thanks. So, yeah, I, I hope after this talk you will like it more. So a little bit about VS Code is a cross-platform lightweight editor by Microsoft. It has a lot of smart editing um, features, such as it lets you debug. It shows you intelligence, which are not just random word-based um, suggestions. It's not like you type A, you get apple and avocado and everything. It's like when you type dot, you get exactly what's exported out of the um, previous object. And uh, it's really fast. Actually, my teammate just told me we implement a feature in this upcoming iteration that's going to be released in the next week. We open a one gigabyte file under one second, like actually 300 milliseconds or something like that. And we do find and the search all under one second. That's for one gigabyte file. It's not one megabyte file. So we really care about performance. We're really fast. And a lot of people yeah, like us because of the reason. Uh, we're really extensible. We have a rich and uh, mature API. We're committed to not making breaking changes to those. Um, we are number one active repos on GitHub from last year's uh, GitHub universe. So yeah, there are a lot of people coming in telling us why, uh, w what parts they think uh, VS Code can be improved. And we respond to those very quickly. We iterate very quickly, develop new features, and uh, make it the editor that people really like. And uh, yeah, our devs are really responsive. We have an issue. You usually. It, it get resolved usually within the monthly iteration. So in the next uh, month, um, yeah, the bug is gone. So yeah, and actually, just by the way, on uh, Stack Overflow uh, pull request, on uh, 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 Stack for, uh, Overflow's um, survey, we were the number one um, most popular editors in the last year. So yeah, give it a try if you haven't. So a little bit about Viter 2. So it's view tooling for VS Code, but what it is is actually just a lot of uh, smart editing features for single file view components. So last year I gave a talk at the ViewConf at Roslav, Poland, and uh, the left side is the data from last year. So last year we have 190k downloads. Um, today we have 2.2 million, and uh, we have 1.7k stars on GitHub, and uh, it's recommended view extension for both VS Code and TypeScript editing view with TypeScript. Um, and uh, here is the image. So now if you actually just go to Marketplace of VS Code, which is like the app store for v VS Code extensions, and you sort by rating, and we're the number one <laughs> out of all the extensions on the Marketplace. So I'm pretty proud of that. Um, yeah, so I mean, yeah, literally sort by rating, and we're the number one. We have zero less than five star users. Like, everybody likes us. I think we do have some problems. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Like the distribution is like everybody is five star. Uh, some people gave three or four stars, but then if I fix their bug or I tell them how to use something properly, at the end they actually change that to five stars. So yeah, I, I'm thankful for those people. But yeah, at the end I get a really good rating. So I think it shows people really like this plugin. So that's also something I talked about last year. Uh, the the real future I was talking about that time because Viter built this language server. Um, language server that can be used by any editors to give view files uh, smartness of editing. And uh, today we are actually already seeing Atom and Vim and uh, Emacs users using view language servers to power their editing experience. So just a very simple overview of the view um, Viter uh, feature. So it has syntax highlighting for all these languages, snippet, image, Linting, error checking, formatting with prettier, and everybody likes it. And auto completion for a lot of things, and hover info. Uh, and uh, for 
Uh, yeah, for all these languages on the right, the languages we support best are HTML, SAS, LESS, um, Post CSS, JavaScript, and TypeScript. I'm just gonna do a very mini demo because it paved the way for what I want to talk about in the um, in the upcoming one. So, for example, now if you so this is a just a starter pack of Viter. So, for example, like um, you can edit around, and then because of uh, I believe you guys already heard from Daniel about the types. So now, if you type this dot, you get a lot of useful suggestions. And then if you are hovering over some of them, you also get those suggestions that can help you add, edit those stuff. And uh, this is... Oh, wait. Uh, tux, the zoom. Oh, I see. Sorry, my bad. Okay. So yeah, if you type this dot, and uh, then it gives you s many useful suggestions. I think it helps you memorize the API. And uh, so for example, um, you can also do like, uh, v and uh, basically we have all the view directives so you don't have to memorize and go to the website and you can basically have e everything at your editor and uh, then we are integrating with some popular view community plugins such as the ESLint plugin so for example here it says yeah because the default rule is that for the um, disallow self-closing uh, on HTML void elements so yeah it shows an error there and so for example I try to just do another stupid error which is uh, having multiple nodes returning uh, in a template and then it marks this as the arrow. So it basically try to aggregate all this information and present you at the right place in the editor, So, which I think is really powerful for a lot of people. And uh, then you can, so for example, for here you, you can type something and then it gives you a lot of the uh, suggestions too. We have the uh, MA2, so for example, if you type uh, these things, the MA2 will automatically pop up. And uh, we, um, yeah, those are just some of the nice things that we have. And uh, for example, here, suppose I did this. It shows the auto fix that I can fix that. And then if I actually uh, screwed my view uh, code over, and then I can press Control F, which is for, um, prettier to format all the code. So it makes, uh, it just tries to make everything work together. And I think that offers a much better development experience compared to others. However, the topic of today's talk is not about Viter. So that was a mini demo. So yeah, uh, yeah, just one last thing I want to mention, because this is very exciting. Type validation in template is uh, by one of the uh, view team member, KTSN Kadashin in Japan. So he was doing this for Viter, and uh, we're making some progress over there. I believe in the next uh, month or so, you should be able to see this, but basically, if you're using TypeScript with Vue, and if you actually pr uh, type, uh, have types for your props, and then you can, we can actually type check all the interpolations inside your template. So that's something really exciting coming up. And uh, <laughs> yeah, ho hopefully it will help you guys. And uh, yeah, instead of just putting the editor, maybe we'll also try to publish a version that you can run from command line or integrate into other build tools. So if you're using TypeScript plus Vue, then you get all the type safety even inside the uh, template interpolations. So you think, wow, it's an impressive list. Congratulations, you are doing really good. But um, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think to be honest, the, the, the thing is that we are much better than the others, I felt. Uh, I can say that because I felt the other extensions, they just have syntax highlighting and uh, not many more. For some of them, have one single feature, such as formatting a single section, such as CSS, and uh, they do not integrate everything together. So we are much better than others, but we also have deficiencies. We're thinking about improving them. So we're missing some language server protocol features. So for example, um, currently, if you try to use F2 to rename a variable, we don't uh, support that. And uh, yeah, we are keep improving it. And uh, we are try to add more SAS and Jade uh, support or PAC support because those are popular languages. And the mixing support is not there yet. So yeah, there, there is still a list of things that we want to do and uh, we'll get there sometime. So I think so far, if you look at Viter, I think it's 60% down. It's like 60% to the place I wanted to be. And uh, if we just keep developing it, it will get there eventually, I think. So yeah, if we just implement feature by feature, at the end, we will get there. But then the thing is that for the editing experience, um, I, I, I think th th there are currently status quo about editing experience that we can improve. It's just like not, not many people are trying. Um, so I was thinking, 
Uh, can I make this better? Like, if I just do incremental changes to Vitor, yeah, it's going to be better and better, but not actually that much better than it is today. So can we make something that's so much better than the current experience? So that's also a slide from my uh, last year's talk. Um, my la so last year I was talking about status quo prototyping. And uh, on the left side, you see the, uh, a page, uh, a screenshot of D3.js. So for those of you who are not familiar with D3.js, it's for data uh, library for data visualization. And on the website, they basically just gave out this HTML and tell the beginners who want to learn D3, hey, go ahead and uh, uh, edit this HTML. And then on the right side, it's called Pen, which is a really popular prototyping tool. It's like, OK, but uh, I will explain why I think they're insufficient. So the problem with online prototyping is that they, most of them have little language support. Like, so for example, if you try to type something in, over there in JavaScript, and you type data dot something, some, a lot of times it does not give you the correct suggestions. It just gives you random stuff, or just a random word that exists in a document. So it does not help you that much. And uh, I felt the whole UI is a little bit crowded. And uh, for me, yeah, I'm a Vim user. And uh, yeah, without Vim, I can't use it. Uh, I can't add it that much. Like if I just open this, I just leave a trail of J's on it. So <laughs> 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 OK, I hope you get that joke. Uh, or, and uh, then people are asking, where's my snippet and themes? I think people really care about their themes and the snippet they have like accumulated over the year. And uh, they fine tuned it to their best uh, working state. So yeah, you don't have those. And then people felt like, I don't know, like, I think those are important things that we should have. And then there is no short, not many shortcuts that you get from the editors. For example, for some people who are really experienced with Sublime or VS Code, they have spent tremendous time, or Veeam, they spend tremendous time to configure the editor. So they don't want you to be um, using this for editing. And uh, the last but not least information, uh, not least important one is that they're slow. When you type something over there, it takes like one or two seconds to update on the left. And uh, it, it just felt slow. So there are also problems with local prototyping. So for example, it's still slow. Like, I don't know how many of you guys run Create React App or like Vue CLS 3.0, but then basically when you run it, and then you change something, and then you need to hit save and wait for Webpack to compile it. And uh, if there are errors, the errors show up in the browser. And no errors, it goes to the screen. But then at that time, it's already like one second after that. It's, it's like, uh, I mean, I, I'm working editors, and we are talking about like, Eight, uh, 8 milliseconds to 16 milliseconds is acceptable um, time range for refreshing. So I, I, I don't really like like waiting one second to, for my change to show up. And uh, yeah, so it's not that good experience too. So let's take a look back at this. Uh, yeah, if you get this right, maybe I will give you a prize or something. But if you look at this, what do you think about it? Do you get any ideas? Yeah, you look at this and you felt it's really similar to view single file component, right? That's called pen. That's view single file component. Uh, template, you have HTML on style, you have style on script, you have script. But basically, the thing is that for a lot of people who are doing prototyping, they don't really care about like, yeah, which uh, chart set is, uh, am I using, uh, whether I should put a title to my um, prototype. I just want to write some divs. I want to fiddle around with it with some styles. And I want to write some script that change the behavior. So I want to make something that's optimized for that workflow and works 120% for them. So here, there is something in Vue CLS 3.0. I played around with it. So basically, those are OK. But then I think, yeah, so for example, let's watch a movie. You type word, you hit save, and then it, show, uh, it uh, Webpack compiles, and then it updates. And then when you update this, you always have to save and then it uh, update. So that's like, OK, but then what if I can offer you something even better? <laughs> OK, so let's come back to this image. So it's something I want to announce today called Prune, which is something I've been working on for quite a while. So yeah, yeah because I, I named the plugin Vitor, which a lot of people later, like every time they come to me, they ask, uh, what is that uh, word? So, so Prune is a Russian word. It's by uh, it's something designed by the guy Elizeski. So when he was, um, so basically he defined as an interchange station between painting and the architecture, which is really vague. But then basically what he does is that he uses as a very vague playground for 
uh, playing around with a lot of ideas without committing any of these ideas to real life. They're just saying, yeah, we make it nice, we play around with these ideas, but we don't care about whether it works in real life. So, but some of these ideas later become really influential ones that he later put into his work. So here is a larger demo that I want to show you about what uh, experience I'm talking about. Okay, so yeah, let me make this larger too. Okay, I think you can see this now. So for example, um, uh, yeah, I can actually just run view CLI here too, view serve uh, hello pro dot view. And uh, yeah, it outputs a bunch of stuff and uh, it gets me something at localhost 8080, which is okay. And then, but then if I type something uh, that I need to save, then it goes there and then it updates it. However, what if we actually forget about that? Um, I built a plugin that runs at localhost 300 and uh, look at how this updates. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> so this is basically real time updates. So I think I don't know if you look into iPad or something, basically they cut, uh, they try to make their pens like from 60 hertz to 120 hertz and uh, people start to like it. Mainly because like when people are drawing or, or people are playing around with ideas, they don't want to be bogged down by the slowness of updating. They just want the things to go into the browser right away. So yeah, like why don't we make this? And then with this, we actually have something very cool. So for example, I can change this to Avenir Next. So now it changes the uh, font. And uh, then something else that you, uh, it's a VS Code feature is that, so for example, if you hover here, it shows a color picker. <laughs> so yeah, those are really useful for helping you to prototype, I think. So for example, you type up, uh, you, you make this uh, smaller, like six and uh, four. It updates real time. Like in the past, I would go to here, and then I would go to here, and then I would go to here, and then I would go to here. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, a ex that's an experience everybody shares, right? Like to argue, okay, now it's here, and then I need to copy this here, and then find out, okay, where is actually my code, and then how can I <laughs> paste this code back to my code, right? <laughs> So try to solve all this problem for you, but then something cooler is that, so for example, now you also have Emmet, which isn't something that a lot of people have. So for example, if I type this, are this gonna be really helpful for prototyping? I, I hope so. For example, like I, felt, I, I find it really useful, for example, let's say, hello, uh, view conf users. Okay, so yeah, those are there. So it's really fast, and then there are also things that I think is cool. So for example, in the script part, when you update the script part, it cannot just directly update the styles or the, um, in, uh, or the, temp or the um, HTML over there. I need to reload the page, but then reload the page can still be really fast. So for example, if I copy and paste this, immediately, like basically under 15 milliseconds, everything refreshes. And let me just do something here. TypeScript has built a library called lib, uh, not library, but basically a type definition for all the library, uh, for all the Doom API. So for example, if I say document query selector, I'm not like typing out in the black. So for example, if I'm going to code pen and then I start to write something, I, I don't think it shows all these suggestions like, so for example, if I type something like this and then in the document, I'm basically just like treating my smart, um, programming file as a text file, and then I'm just like typing this. This doesn't feel fun, and I think this feels much more fun. So let's say we have the test here. Okay, so it's there, and then I assign this as a el. And then I do the el dot, yeah, I can maybe make the style. Uh, okay, so it doesn't show up, but then the style may be um, color blue. Yep, it's there. So it's really fast, it's instant feedback, and I think it's gonna be really helpful for you. Mm, so you, you might think that, uh, is that it? So do you have something better? <laughs> 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 Hello, guys. 
So you see, I have a bunch of notebooks. I, I basically, I just make this basically optimized for notebook workflow. I don't want to make real world apps. I just want to make this work really nice. So when I type this, you, you notice what happened? Like I can, I can switch between this. So basically, yeah, if you want your applause, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but basically the thing is that I no longer need to leave my editor now. So I can just type everything here and then everything works and I can switch between them and everything still works too. So for example, like now I'm on another file and then I remove those two, they're gone. And then I put them back, they're here. And then in here, let's say the font is, uh, font is not found. So let's say we change the background um, color and uh, to something like this. Yeah, it's so much fun. It's, it's such an interactive way of playing around with your code, right? So, and then other things such as, like, you have D3, right? Uh, how many of you guys remember even, like, 10 API out of all the D3 APIs? I don't think many of you do, but then if you type D3 here, you get all the APIs that's right at your fingertip. So, for example, like, say, you type D3.select, and uh, here you can now actually know what each of the functions doing. It gives you so much more perspective into a snippet code that somebody else has written. So you, you're not like like trying to always switch between this and then hello, where is this three documentation for um, this three dot select for something. So you're no longer like going between your browser and your editor. You are basically doing everything in your editor and uh, your editor try to organize and present these informations at the right place for you. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, something else is that I want to show you too, I think. So yeah, so I don't know. I think you, you probably remember this guy, right? So yeah, she was the person who gave us a talk yesterday, Rachel. Hello. <laughs> so OK. So if I go to code pen and I, mm, yeah, I think. OK. Uh, yeah, space audit. That's all why. OK, so she was writing this here, right? So I wrote something similar. It works in Editor 2. And I actually spot a bug that she has. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that, that's a really funny thing. So OK, let, let me copy this part. And let me paste this here. OK, so, and then if I press format, what did you notice here? Yeah, I mean, that's a kind of very common case. We should not blame the author for this, but then it's just sometimes like people miss, like I make typos on the, probably somewhere in the presentation too. But basically the thing is that, yeah, people make these mistakes, but then with editors, like once I fix that, and then I hit save, and then it auto saves, and it auto formats, and uh, it's much nicer, so it catches a lot of the bugs I have. So for example, like if I have an open tag, I forgot to close it. And then if I'm passing to view something garbage, like I don't know if this works, but OK. Yeah, OK, view actually takes whatever. That's <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, no, no, no. OK, so let me, let me try to do something. Get element by ID, and then I pass in five. And it does not show you anything, right? However, if you type this thing, this is basically telling TypeScript to type check your files. So now, if you get element by ID and you pass it in a number, it no longer works. However, this is something you can also configure globally. So for example, in here, if you want to say um, check JS true. OK, and then now if I reload this guy. <laughs> Mm, yeah, I need to switch between them. But yeah, basically now you see, uh, I don't, I, I can remove this one. And uh, okay, cannot find module view. That's another problem. But basically it type checks, a lot, uh, <laughs> it type checks everything for you. And uh, then basically I think that prevents a lot of people from having errors. And, uh, and uh, you were thinking, okay, what you are building was for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? So. Actually, it's something else. Look at this. Is this a HTML tag? It's not a HTML tag. It's a view tag. And uh, what is V on? V on is also a view tag. So those are view files. Those are view templates. Those are not JavaScript. But basically, the way I'm calling it is just like I use a standard API to view API to um, uh, 
call them, and basically, yeah, those are Rachel's code, not my code. But basically, yeah, it's just another way of writing this, and uh, it allows you to very easily experiment with a lot of the ideas. So yeah, and then as you're switching between them, and uh, some of them are really nice. So for example, like I, I was playing around with this, and I saw this, this becomes really cool. Or is it? Mm. Yeah, so basically, like you can play around with these variables, and uh, then you, you see how everything works together, because the um, presentation gives you immediate feedback. So you understand what's going on there. And uh, let's say I, I'm here, OK, yeah, I need to add some globals over there. but. Basically, yeah, if I don't understand something, I hover over it, and I see what's going on there. OK, so um, here's the demo. Uh, it's a larger demo compared to previous mini demo. But um, <laughs> yeah, but OK, let's talk a little bit about why I'm doing this. How many times do I get left? I have, OK, yeah. Um, so the thing is that, apparently, as you have seen, it's much faster. And I think that's much better experience, because the, mom the moment from you're typing a character to updating a scene on the screen, it's, it's crucial. Like if it's faster by a magnitude, then it basically makes prototyping a much more pleasant experience. It's like you just have a pen and you're writing on a notebook and it immediately show up. It's not like I write there and after five seconds a uh, stroke like became visible there. That's not fun for drawing or writing or anything at all, right? And er another thing is that it's right at the editor. You, you don't need to download any plugins. You don't need to download any um, dependencies or anything. Let me, uh, I think I forgot one thing to show you. But basically, like, let's say if you want to um, play around with something. OK, so this is Lodash. So I just basically write this. Um, OK, I think it get disconnected. OK, so oh yeah, because it, it's empty, that's why. OK, so like in view, in Vitor, I offer this uh, snippet called scaffold. Basically, if I write scaffold, it's there. And then as soon as I hit command say S, it saves and it formats. And then let's say i learning Lodash right now. And then here, like in the script, I can basically just write something. Let's say, OK, um, yeah, let me, uh, let me try to do um, console.log. Oh, yeah, I need to import Lodash first. Uh, OK, so yeah, let's see. I have a bunch of all these things. But basically, you, uh, I can maybe try something memoirs or something that people don't uh, really know. But, <laughs> but basically, the thing is that, as you notice, I prototype with just that single file. There's no dependency happening. Yeah. I forgot about demoing that in my demo, but here, here I want to show you the output of how it looks like. When you go to the elements, you see the HTML over there, you see the styles over there, and then you see some scripts over there. You see all these are very readable, like they're not gumballed together by um, other build tools, like they're still readable. So I think another thing I might do is that basically just I can image each view file corresponding to a um, HTML file. And then you can serve it on Netlify, serve it on storage, on GitHub pages, on wherever you want. And yeah, as you are switching between those, yeah, those, are, those generate those um, URLs. So yeah, why not? But yeah, the thing is that basically having all this very clear, I think it reduces the kind of um, opacity that a lot of people have towards uh, build tools. Because a lot of build tools, let's say if I run something such as view serve hello pro. So basically now if you inspect the code, and I can make this larger. You inspect the code and then you see the FGS, but then if you actually look into the FGS, um, you, you don't know what the hell is going on because, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it's, it's complicated. I think Webpack deserves some merit here actually because I think they support everything and out of the box and they make it a really good experience to Basically, they, they bundle everything together so your app works everywhere. I think it's great. But at the same time, can we also try to emit something that's simpler and easier to understand without actually just bundling everything? So you see my, um, OK, so for this one, what does it emit? It basically does the code splitting the most dumb way. Um, I, I basically just, if you have an import, I analyze your script part. I put a script tag on the top. 
and it links to a famous CDN that I guess everybody is using. And for each page you visit on a prompt, they're going to be using the same file from the CDN. So once you visit the prompt file on the internet, the next time you go to one, you basically just download just one kilobytes or two kilobytes of all this. It does a code splitting uh, without any bundle, without any bundle. It generates everything out as HTML. So, yep. Okay, on the right side, yeah, I, I think that's a meme that, meme that a lot of people see. So, <laughs> I, I don't know, I felt like uh, three years ago when I first started to play around with framework and stuff, I felt, yeah, they're still easy, but then things just become more and more complex. So that at one day, like when I try to create a React app or Vue app, and uh, if I look a little bit into the Webpack build folder, I see like a lot of things that I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on there, and I don't understand what's there anymore. So I feel for a lot of new users, they have a lot of churn uh, because you go from HTML and CSS to building a modern app, just basically just telling them this, hey, that's how you draw O, you draw two circles, then you draw the O. So it's like there's so many things to learn that it makes your life not so good. So now, what if you can just basically write a modern HTML and then just more than not just single page, yeah, these are single page HTML. It's actually just, you can consider them, them as single page apps. But basically, it lowers the learning curve for the beginners so much that I think it's really worth doing it. So yeah, it's easy for beginners to pick up, present the information at the right place in editor so you see the right information. Uh, it catches errors for the beginner. So if a beginner is saying, hey, I'm doing, um, I'm doing something wrong uh, with the D3 method that I don't really understand. The editor will catch that for him and tell him where he's wrong. And uh, there are no choices to make. I make this very explicit because, I, I mean, like having too many choices basically make people like not happy. Um, I, I think one of the philosophy I really enjoy from Golang community is that Golang started this kind of like philosophy of we have the Go format, we don't offer you any options. So everything just at the end, it becomes the same thing. So I, I think Prettier also does a good job, so that's why I'm using Prettier, and I don't want to offer you any kind of stylistic choices, like semicolons or no semicolons, who cares? Like, I don't care, and I don't believe you care, and I don't want you to be care, because when you are caring about those things, it basically make you not prototyping, but basically making some um, choices for three hours, but not actually <laughs> becoming any productive. <laughs> And another thing is that, <laughs> okay, yeah, another thing is that there is no version choosing. So let's say you um, use Lodash, we import Lodash, right? You, uh, so let's go back to the example. You're using Lodash, right? You don't, you don't really know which version is it, but is that something that you really care? So for example, like when I build this extension, I include all the extensions, all the dependencies for you, all the type suggestions for you. So you don't choose anything. You just basically write this simple thing that does not require any dependency, and you're good to go. And the one final thing is that basically, I, I just, I don't know, I think nowadays a lot of people are saying, yeah, you're building a single page app for app or something. But I feel a lot of times it's a kind of overkill. It's not like worth the complexity. It's like we're building something basic, basically with HTML and CSS, and we're trying to learn some stuff, and we're, we're not like trying to build a commercial app that has to eat the world. We can build something small that's elegant, that's, or that's just for fun, for just playing around with my ideas. So I think basically having this as something that's an outlet of ideas is not meant for any real world uh, purposes, but you can still serve them as HTML or online, and it's really fast. I mean, each page is probably just one or two kilobytes. But yeah, basically, I, I don't want it to be, yeah, okay, I want you to become a real world framework that has to support all these use cases. I just want it to be small and fast and elegant and then uh, make your life happy and achieve the 120% for you. And the, another thing is that from the more view, so you're asking, okay, so you're doing that, how does that benefit view? So I think the first thing is that it's a test bed for Viter, so as Viter grow more and more complex, I want to test some of the functionalities um, in here, and then I want to bring those good editing experience with to uh, Viter. So for example, um, what if we can actually build, have the same thing for your Webpack build and for your parcel build? Those would be really powerful ideas, but then Webpack support much more, uh, wider range of everything. So 
uh, to support those, I need to start small, experiment with ideas, and at a later stage, I can bring those ideas to support your um, full view apps. And then the other thing is that I think it's a springboard from HTML, CSS to view because I mean, a lot of people like they just go to WC schools and learn some basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but then they are having a hard time getting into some frameworks and other stuff. So I think this basically helps them, gives them confidence to play around with things. The last thing is that uh, I think it's a progressive editor plugin in a way that, okay, so V3 is for full view apps. This is for something that's single file view component. It will release something later basically for library load with some of the functionalities that are present here. So that those are for your HTML, purely static um, histori uh, legacy web apps. But basically, having something that in the editor for you, uh, whatever kind of app you have. So yeah, the, the repos are prone at slash prone, but then I didn't actually put stuff over there yet because yeah, busy preparing the demos. I hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think I want to end my talk with this quote from Marshall McLuhan. So he was saying, we shape our tools and our tools shape us. I think it's, a, it's like a lot of times we build tools and we're just saying, okay, people are using it and then people are saying, uh, people like it or don't like, uh, don't like it, but then continue to use it. But I think basically for a lot of the tools I use, I think they fundamentally change the way I think about things. So for example, I think for Vue, Evan did a really good job of trying to um, integrate everything into a very compact and uh, elegant framework that does not expose a lot of externals to others. One of the quotes from him was that he planned to make Vue X even simpler so that in the future people can pick it up later. And I think one of the criticism, criticism for Redux is that it's too much boilerplate. So I really like the ideas of like making these tools that basically makes, makes you work really easily and simply, and at the end, because of these tools, you also start to think simply and build simple things that works. Um, yeah, that's my talk. I hope you like it. <laughs>